Hello and welcome back to another video. Recently, surgeons at the University of Maryland School of Medicine successfully replaced the failing heart of the 57-year-old man with a fresh one from a pig. And four weeks later, the patient, David Bennett, continues to recover with no signs of rejection. This is called xenotransplantation, and it's what I'm going to be talking about today. The replacement of human organs with other species' organs. While attempts have been trialled in the past, many have failed, but we might be able to enter a new era of transplants, and today I'm going to explain why. There is currently a massive problem with the lack of organs available for uh, people who need them in the world. For example, in the US, the gap is continuing to widen. In 2002, there was just over 42,000 people who needed transplants, while today there's over 66,000, and this number only continues to increase. This is really difficult because the lack of available organs you know, doesn't really change because it's hard to get the organs from people uh, because you can only take them you know, if, if they've died and only if they've died in specific ways and certain types of organs. Sometimes the organs aren't usable for transplants and sometimes they're the wrong type. You know, if someone's slightly overweight so, or lives in a healthy lifestyle, the organs generally can't be used. Maybe the organs don't properly match the donor very well and therefore they're rejected. So there's all kind of problems with current organs that mean it's hard to find a match and why the waiting list continues to increase but the organ amount of organs available stays the same. However, this new research that's just occurred has shown that pigs can be used to transplant a pig heart into a human, which creates a whole new range of available options for transplants. Now the first question I had when thinking about this is why pigs though? Why not something that's more closely related in theory to a human like a primate? Originally, the xenotransplant work was done with primitive donors like baboons, but this has gradually changed over time to pigs as the animal of choice. Even though pigs and humans are pretty evolutionally distant from each other, the two species do still remain largely similar in organ size and physiology. For example, pig heart valves are already transplanted to humans today very often, and so there's you know prior evidence that this kind of movement of pig uh, organs into humans is does work well and is usable. Traditionally with pigs as well for xenotransplants there has been large safety issues by the transfer of potentially fatal viruses from the pigs into the humans, particularly a group of viruses called porcine endogenous retroviruses or PERVs. However more recently these studies show that animals grown in pathogen free environments do not pose a risk of infection to humans as well. So those kind of prior boundaries where you know there's a lack of research in pig transplantation to human that's been kind of overcome over the years. And also the you know, risk of infectious diseases passing from pigs and humans has also been proven to not really be a problem. However, the key scientific advancement that has actually allowed these xenotransplants transplants to become a reality where they weren't before is actually the advancement of CRISPR gene editing. This allows the easy addition or removal of genes from the pig. For example, for the recent transplantation of David Bennett, 10 genes were changed in the pig. Four of these genes were genes where they were knocked out or disabled from the pig genome. These were genes that often could cause the human donor to reject the pig heart. For example, three of the genes prevented the pig adding carbohydrate molecules to cells in their organs. And these genes could have led to some kind of rejection by the human body. The other gene also dealt with the pig growth hormone and it helped prevent the heart growing too large and too big for the human body. The other six genes that were changed were actually genes introduced into the pig. These were human genes that were inserted into the pig to make it you know, more accepted by the human body. For example, it helped reduce blood clotting, inflammation, and antibody attack. These genes were added to try and reduce the risk of infection, meaning the heart could stay longer in the human body and suffer less damage by the human immune system. Hopefully these 10 gene edits combined will allow the pig hearts to continue functioning for a long time to come in the human. Although, as always, long-term prospects still need to be analyzed for a, quite a long period of time to see if this is really the case. Often human-to-human -human donation suffers from continued attack by the body's immune system over time because there's always, it's not, never gonna be perfect and the human immune system is always gonna recognize that this organ is not necessarily you know, from itself, that it's a foreign entity. And while this may continue to happen with the pig hearts, the fact you can kind of change the genes to make it more accepted reduces this risk. And there's also been much more uh, advancements in autoimmune drugs recently. And so David Bennett has been on a autoimmune treatment with a new drug that's called KPL-404, 
which was created to help reduce damage to you transplants even more by you know reducing the amount your immune system attacks the transplanted organ so that's the kind of two changes is the CRISPR gene editing of the pig itself makes less rejection and also these new drugs reduce the risk of uh, rejection by the the human body the human donor body and so that's kind of the beneficial why this time period right now has allowed these xenotransplants to become much more of a reality than they've ever been before. Now, as always, the reason why it may not become a reality, you know, for a, a while, even though it is feasibly possible, is the fact that other than the risk of rejection, there are other, other factors potentially affecting them becoming a reality. For example, there's the ethical debate, should pigs be grown, harvested just for organs to give to humans? And should they be genetically modified? That's another point as well. And so while a debate will rage for that for a while, I think over time people might become more accepting to it. For example, with human to human transplants, that was, you know, looked down upon necessarily to begin with because it was, you know, taking it from, you know, dead humans essentially. And similarly, IVF babies, test tube babies were seriously looked down upon because it wasn't natural when it first started, but now it's generally become pretty accepted. And so there's kind of a variety of ways that it maybe will become more um, accepted over time. And so that's, you know, a point that when it, by the time it actually becomes reality, it'll probably be accepted by most people. Additionally, I don't really like the idea of putting all the focus on transplants as the answer to this problem. You know, it's kind of looking at only the organs once they've failed to fix them, to replace them. When, for example, you could focus more on regenerative medicine to kind of restore and repair faulty hearts um, rather than you know simply taking out and replacing a new one and that should could potentially save a lot more money and also potentially you know reduce the risk of rejection and death caused by transplants that go go wrong and also can kind of you know even if we get more pig or hearts into humans there's still going to be quite a few people who can't receive them or you know aren't able to receive them or whatever and so focusing on fixing people, fixing those issues rather than just, you know, replacing them is um, kind of key going forward as an alternative pathway to just transplants. However, it is incredibly cool what they've been able to do. And I think it shows the testimony of how CRISPR gene editing has really helped enhance a lot of things in science. And I'm sure I'm going to talk about it in more videos, simply by the ease and specificity you can target and knock out and add genes to a genome to make a transgenic animal. And so if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos about similar topics. Thank you.